Um, it's a great pleasure to be speaking here. Um, so basically, I want to talk about the simple case of how to define um, the Stokes data of a linear connection on a curve. Um, so for most people here, this is probably a quite trivial thing to do. But the problem is that lots of people think about the same objects in various different ways. And I want to talk about how to, how to pass between the different perspectives. Um, so part of the motivation is because these um, you know, spaces of Stokes data give the, the um, simplest description of moduli spaces of connections on curves. Um, and moduli spaces of connection on, on curves are important because um, they form the, the fibers which occur in the isomonogamy, and in particular in the panel of A equations. So we want to understand these spaces extremely sort of properly. Um, it, in order to be better understand questions about um, isomonogamy and panel of A equations. Um, so in particular, all of the basic examples occur in the theory of, of pa panel of A equations. Um, so the basic issue is that so there, there was a paper of Stokes in 1857, um, which was the same year as the paper of Riemann, where he looked at the, the monogamy of the Gauss hypergeometric function. Um, and that perspective evolved, and we now have the fundamental group, and we can talk about the, the space of representations of the fundamental group, and everyone knows what you mean. Whereas if we talk about the space of Stokes data, various different people have di different perspectives, and most people don't know at all. Um, so one would like to try to upgrade the Stokes perspective to be equally well known to um, the spaces of representations of the fundamental group that people know and love. Um, so let me describe this quite mathematically. So we want to fix a curve. Um, so sigma is a, a smooth, compact, complex algebraic curve. Um, and I'll fix a finite collection of points A in this curve and have a look at the punctured curve sigma o, um, which is sigma minus a. Um, so we want to look at the category of connections on vector bundles um, on this punctured curve. So, so we want to look at the category con, um, so of algebraic connections on this open curve. And so we're, we're, we're looking at pairs e nabla. Um, where nabla is a connection on E. So, so it's an operator that goes from E to E tensor omega 1. Um, uh, so from the sections of E to E tensored with the 1 forms. Um, and it has to obey Leibniz, which says that nabla applied to a function f multiplied by a local section s is df s plus f nabla of s. Um, and e um, is an algebraic vector bundle, algebraic vector bundle um, over our open curve. Um, so we want to look at the category of all of those. And the, the magical fact is that this category has a purely topological description. Um, in fact, it has various different descriptions. And I want to talk about three of them and compare them in this talk. Um, so the first piece of topological data to take is the local system of s solutions. And so we can um, define a fun 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 functor to the category of local distance. So the, the um, locally constant sheaves of finite dimensional complex vector spaces. And if we choose a base point, this is equivalent to the category of representations of the fundamental group of the curve. So this is quite simple and purely topological. Um, so if I have an open subset U, the sections of the local system on this open set U, and so I have an open set U there, I just look at the, the analytic solutions of this connection on this open set. So it's the kernel. Um, of the operator nabla applied to the analytic vector bundle um, on this set U. Um, so Cauchy tells us that if I have a sm small enough disk, I have a finite di di dimensional complex vector space of dimension equal to the rank of the vector bundle E, 
And basically the definition of local system is the object that these open, um, these vector spaces V form. Um, okay, so there's an equivalence between the subcategory con RS, the tame or the regular singular connections. Um, so this is a subcategory and this is an equivalence. Um, so tame um, is the Fuchsian condition. So solutions have at most polynomial growth, um, or it's possible to ch choose an algebraic extension of the bundle across the poles such that the connection has first order poles. Um, so the basic question is, you know, so what to put here such that I have an equivalence um, between the local systems and the Stokes local systems here. So the basic point is that there's various different descriptions and we want to describe three. Um, so one particular did description will be called the Stokes local systems and others will be the Stokes filter local systems and the Stokes graded local systems. Um, so I have an inclusion here um, from the local systems into the Stokes local systems. So um, there's a paper, um, this is on the archive um, in March this year, um, and the basic examples are in a paper, um, I think on the archive in 15, maybe 1501. Um, and this is basically explaining how to read a book of Sibuya um, from 1975. Um, and it should probably talk more about the paper of Burkhoff, which I think I didn't mention there, but um, lots of this is already in Burkhoff's paper in 1913. Um, OK, so the motivation is that we can then look at moduli spaces of these. Uh, so the basic picture, if I fix the, the, the rank at the top, so if I look at the subgroupoid of local systems of rank n, um, I can look at the set of isomorphism classes there. Um, so it's if I you know, map to the, from the objects of this to the set of isomorphism classes, then this becomes the, the set of orbits of a reductive algebraic group on an affine, affine variety. And so it ends up being HOM uh, pi 1 of the punctured curve sigma O with respect to a base point B into GLNC modulo GLNC. So this is GLNC. And so I have a, an affine variety. Um, I find variety quotiented by a reductive group. And so this is the, um, so if I look at the stack quotient, you'll get the character stack. Um, and if you look at the affine GIT quotient, you get the character variety. Um, so this is often called the Betty space and denoted MB. Um, B for Betty. Uh, OK, so because we have the nice descriptions of the space at the bottom, it's possible to do the, the same there. Um, the issue is that you need to fix more than just the rank in order to get nice spaces of finite dimensions. And so we look at the um, subgroupoid with fixed irregular class. So part of our aim is to define what we mean by the irregular class. Um, so in particular, that will fix the rank. Um, and then we'll look at the set of isomorphism classes of these. Um, and it's possible to describe that again as the orbits of a <coughs> reductive algebraic group on a affine variety. I'll write it as HOM S pi G modulo H. And I'd like to explain what is this. Um, First of all, perhaps it's best to explain this one slightly differently. It's, it's also isomorphic to the homomorphisms from the groupoid pi into g modulo g to the m. Um, so here I've fixed uh, pi to be the fundamental groupoid of our curve sigma o, and I want to choose a base point near each of the punctures. So I've got this set a, which is like a1 up to am. Um, so I have a curve with some punctures. 
um, for instance, just the one A, and I'm ch choosing a base point B near t t t to there. And so B B beta is a collection of base points B1 to Bm. Um, and that's a good thing to do from the symplectic or the Poisson perspective. Um, in particular, the action of G here basically corresponds to fixing a f framing at the um, base point. And so um, the statement at the end of the day is that this is a quasi-Hamiltonian uh, G to the M space. Um, and the moment map um, is the map that takes the monogamy around these punctures. Um, so this is like mu for the base point B, B equals um, monogamy, uh, the, the local monogamy. So that's a map from the space at the top here, uh, mu to G to the M. Um, so in particular, this perspective implies that um, this space MB has an algebraic Poisson structure. Um, so I'll talk more about the background behind it. Um, this picture is due to Alexeyev, Malkin, and Mein Renken. Um, so once we phrase it in th this perspective, it's closer to this. Um, and the same statement also holds in the wild picture at th the bottom. And so this will be the wild character variety. Um, and it depends on the choice of this triple uh, sigma, the points, and the cl class th theta. Um, and it's natural to call that a wild Riemann surface. What is the definition of Poissier? Um, so it's the theory of group valued moment maps. So you have a map which takes the values in the group, um, and then you can do symplectic quotients and fusion there. Um, maybe I'll give some examples in a moment. Um, so in particular, it's the natural geometric structures which occur on, on spaces of framed representations of the fundamental groups. So the space at the, the top here, um, uh, the, the space at the top here is a natural example of a, a quasi-Hamiltonian G to the M space, where M is the number of punctures. Uh, OK. Um, right, so let me draw a picture which did, describes the three different perspectives that we want to get to. Um, it, in order to define this. Uh, OK, so I don't just want to list all of the definitions straight away, but let me do this in steps. Um, so I have a curve with a marked point. So I want to look at the, the circle of directions. And so this is the circle, which is the, you know, the boundary of the real oriented blow up at the point A. And so I take the tangent space to sigma at A, and I puncture it, and I quotient by R plus. Um, so if I have a point on the curve, I get this circle. Um, so let's suppose I look at part of the circle. Um, so the first perspective is this um, perspective of these Stokes filtered local systems. Um, so this goes back to Deline. Um, I think it was conjectured by Deline and proved by Malgrange um, in the early 80s. Um, so there the picture is that you choose, well, there's, there's the class determines distinguished directions. And so there's preferred points here. Um, I will call these the Stokes directions S. Um, so if you have a look at the picture in Stokes's paper, these are the directions on which the dominance ordering switches over. Um, so these are the directions which are important in the Stokes filtration perspective. Uh, and so you look at the, the filtrations given by the exponential growth rates of solutions. And so on each of the sectors, so I have the, the, the local system <laughs> V, in each of the sectors between these Stokes directions, there's a well-defined filtration, um, 
which I can call something like this, f5. Um, and it's possible to write down axioms of these if you um, work out the topological meaning of the local analytic asym local asymptotic existence theorem. Um, that gives you axioms for how these filtrations are allowed to jump across the Stokes directions. And Deline wrote down axioms, and Malgrange pr proved that the category of these Stokes filter local systems is equivalent <coughs> to the algebraic category of connections. So it's an extension of the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence for these regular singular connections, which just involve taking the monodromy. Um, OK, so another perspective is more sort of, I, I don't know, the resurgent or the multi summation perspective. I'll draw that over here. Um, so the intrinsic statement is that it's possible to take the, the associated graded of these filtrations, and this gives you a well-defined continuous graded local system in a small punctured disk around the mark point. And so on this picture, that corresponds to a ha halo or small, uh, um, small annulus um, on which we naturally have a graded local system. Um, so at the end of the day, the irregular class involves a particular cover, um, a finite cover. Um, these are the exponents. Um, I'll hopefully I'll de define that properly in a minute, um, but the fact is we naturally get an I-graded um, local system, um, which is just the associated graded of the St Stokes filtration there. Um, now, the Stokes perspective, which has evolved into this multi spatial perspective, um, says that there are uh, different distinguished directions. Um, so I'll draw these like this, um, and I'll call these A, the singular directions. Um, so this, in general, is different to, to S. So in Stokes's picture, um, for Airy, these are the directions which are marked A, B, C um, here. Um, and one way to think about what Stokes did um, is that there's a natural way to glue this graded local system to the local system of solutions V that we had before. So it's as if on this halo, we actually have two naturally defined local systems, the um, associated graded of the Stokes filtration and the restriction of V. Um, and Stokes says that there's a, a preferred naturally defined way to glue um, this I graded local system, um, which I'll call V0, um, to V, um, at least away from these singular directions. Um, so what we do, we boldly add these extra punctures, the tangential punctures, and restrict V outside the halo. And then we know that there's a way to glue V to V0 across each of the components between these tangential punctures. Um, so V0 glues to V. This is what Stokes says. Um, and this gives you a local system on this curve with these extra punctures taken out. Um, so this is what I'll call the Stokes local system. Uh, blackboard bold V. Um, and it's got by gluing V0 and V together. And then we can write down axioms, or we can read papers of Michel Richel and Ramis and others, and see that there's preferred Stokes groups um, for each singular direction d. And the monodromy of this Stokes local system around these extra punctures has to be restricted to be in these groups. And we also have to add the condition which corresponds to having a graded local system in this halo. Um, and that gives you axioms for the local systems which occur. But at the end of the day, it's just re related to um, the representations of the fundamental group of this curve with these extra punctures. And so we, we have sigma tilde is sigma O minus um, these extra punctures E, D, D for D, a singular direction. 
Um, and then we can define pi to be the fundamental groupoid of this curve with these extra punches, uh, sigma tilde with some base points b, one base point in each halo. Um, and so we get that the category of Stokes local systems embeds um, as the Stokes representations inside the space of all of the representations of this groupoid pi into G. Um, and because we've chosen base points in the ha halo, the local system is naturally graded. And so the thing that acts isn't all of the group G at each of the base points. It's more this, you know, the, the graded automorphisms of the, the, the fiber. So we get this group H, which is like the product of the graded automorphisms of each of the base points H1 up to Hm, which is a subgroup of G to the M. And that naturally acts. And the set of isomorphism classes of, of um, Stokes local systems is the, the quotient or the set of orbits of this group H on the space of Stokes representations here. So it's, it's equally explicit to the um, tame definition that we, we had before. It's just that you need to add in these wild monodromies or Stokes or um, Stokes automorphisms around the boundary, um, around these tangential punches at the boundary. Um, so that's just a way to phrase you know, what lots of people do in a nice intrinsic way. Um, now the problem is that about half of the world works in this perspective and half of the world works in that perspective and they're kind of working in parallel. So what we would like to do is describe a picture in the middle uh, which kind of explains the bridge between the two perspectives. Um, and this will be the, so here we've got the Stokes local systems, here we've got the Stokes filtered local systems, this is the Stokes graded local systems. Um, or if you prefer the Stokes decompositions. Um, Stokes decompositions. Um, so these are very close to the Stokes local systems that we had before, so I'll draw that there's just an epsilon difference. It's just thinking about what happens there slightly differently. Um, so we have the same special directions. We again use the singular directions that we had before. Um, so I'll try to draw those in the same place. Um, so these are again the singular di directions A. And now we... Uh, sorry, excuse me. So can I say a bit more? What is this uh, singular direction A? So in Stokes's picture, um, it's the ones where there's a maximal difference. So it's if I'll have e to the q1 there and e to the q2 here, and you look at the, sp the points where e to the q1 minus q2 has maximal decay, the points of maximal decay, or the, the poms, or the apples, if you like. Uh, uh, um, right, so I should point out that this is explained very carefully in the paper, which took ages to write, and I'm just trying to present the picture to encourage people to look at the paper. It's, it's, much, um, it's much more carefully explained there. Um, but the basic point is that these filtrations are canonically split, and we can describe it instead in terms of gradings. And so here we have like gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4, gamma 5. Um, so these are just the gradings. So if I start on this perspective, I have a graded local system, and I ha have an actual way to glue that to the local system V. And so that, in particular, gives a grading on this sector of the local system V. Um, and that's the map from here to here just forgets the um, grading, you know, well, where it's supposed to um, have this monogamy. Um, Yes, everything here is completely intrinsically defined. At the start of the paper, I sort of give a list of all of the things which are canonically attached to a connection. Um, and then these three different perspectives result from axiomatizing the various pieces of the data. And so that's the, the reason we get these different perspectives. Explain the semantics, at least on the right hand side. Because I'll try to get to it, yeah. Uh, um, what are conditions, yeah. Um, so let me just, so the map from here to here is easy. Uh, no, we don't know, I don't know exact definition of what the conditions on this identification between graded and ungraded. Ah, so, say, yeah. so I have an isomorphism of local sys systems between V0 and V at each of the points between any consecutive pair of singular directions. <laughs> And then you have to put in the conditions that correspond to the fact that the monogamy around here 
has to be in the Stokes group. Actually, it's best to choose the base point there, and then there's a well-defined well, well Stokes group. It's as if I have a projection of some roots, um, which give light near the Stokes arrows, and then the Stokes kind of block up kind of the way. Stokes group is the group whose Lie algebra is generated by these Stokes arrows, and these are, you know, the arrows which map to these points of maximal decay. Um, the Stokes groups are carefully explained in this paper of Michel Lodi Richol from 1995, but it's also in the paper of Martinet and Ramis about the um, the wild fundamental group. Um, and it extends what lots of people do explicitly in the world of Panlove equations as well. Um, so to relate the two pictures here, I just need to explain how to take the wild monogamy of a pair of um, consecutive gradings. And then the main work is how to pass between the Stokes filtrations and the Stokes gradings. Um, so let me just define the wild monogamy first. Um, so this is sort of an elementary fact. I'll just okay. So perhaps I'll just state the th theorem at the end of the day. Um, is that once you have th these axioms, um, then there's a unique Stokes graded local system. Um, for each Stokes filtered local system. So for each, um, so it's Stokes filtered local system um, of class, so let me call this V with the filtrations F um, of class theta. Um, so there exists a unique Stokes grading on this local system which splits the filtrations at each point where both are defined. Um, there exists a unique um, Stokes graded local system, so with the same V and these gr gradings, so of class theta, um, such that you know, gamma of D splits um, FD for all D um, which is not Stokes or singular. Um, um, I'm, in fact, I think here's a kind of two possibilities to go clockwise, anti-clockwise. No, that's the Birkhoff perspective. That's different. Here it's canonically d defined it's in the middle. Um, I, I don't want to talk about the Birkhoff perspective, but, but basically in the case of one d d devil. Yeah, so I haven't actually explained who did this. And so perhaps this perspective, we should put the names of like Stokes, I don't know, Birkhoff, um, and then perhaps jerk, jerk at, um, although his conventions are slightly different. Um, and then, I don't know, Ramis, uh, Lode Richot. Um, so that's the perspective I've traditionally used in the past, because it's much more explicit that we have these pr pr presentations. Um, of course, the way it's de defined, I mean, it's defined by taking the multi summation of a formalized somorphism between the local system and the graded the, um, the graded local system. Um, okay, so that's the statement one can prove at the end of the day. Um, though it's not very clear what it means at the moment because I haven't defined everything. What I do want to define, um, so is the wild monogamy of a pair of compatible gradings. So this is in order to define the map that passes from Stokes graded d d d d local systems to Stokes local systems um, uh, gradings. Um, so this is a very elementary fact, but it's key to see you know, sort of how the wild monogamy or the Stokes automorphism appears. Uh, so we have a set I um, and we have V as a complex vector space. Um, I have a pair of I gradings. So gamma 1 and gamma 2 are I gradings um, of uh, V. Um, so for instance, I would have V 
is the sum of subspaces gamma 1 of i, where it's indexed by i. Um, so in particular, it's possible to have subspaces of dimension 0, and so i could be much bigger than the di dimension of v. And I would also have that for subspaces g g gamma 2 of i as well. Um, so if I have an order, a t total order, order on i, um, then I can talk about the associated filtration. Um, so associated filtration um, using that particular order. So I get sort of F1 um, is the filtration associated to the grading gamma 1 with this particular order. Um, so for instance, you, you would have like F1 of i uh, is equal to the sum of smaller indices j um, of these pieces gamma 1 of j. And you would get F2 as, as well. Associated filtration is graded. No? Yes, but I'm saying that given an order, I can define this. This is a, a simple fact. Um, so we then say that gamma 1 and gamma 2 are compatible if there exists an order such that f1 is equal to f2. So it's possible to have gradings which are distinct such that for a particular order their filtrations are the same. So in our picture all of the consecutive gradings are compatible. Um, and then it's possible to define these preferred automorphisms that take one grading into the other which just depend on the gradings. So you know you might typically have a pair of bases and you could take the gradings that come from those and there's in general lots of automorphisms that take one grading into the, 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 the other. The point is if they're compatible that there's a preferred one, um, which in particular is unipotent, but all of the automorphisms, you know, that's not enough to de determine it. And so what we do, um, we take this graded vector space V gamma of 1, and that's isomorphic as a graded vector space to the associated graded of the first filtration F1, because this is the filtration determined by that for a particular order. And by de definition, that's supposed to be equal to the graded of um, V of F2. And that's isomorphic to V of gamma of 2. Um, so we end up with this Stokes automorphism, or wild monogamy, um, which is a graded automorphism from V gamma 1 to V gamma 2. So G gamma 1 gamma 2. Um, so this in particular is in you know, GL of V. So there's a preferred automorphism of the vector space that takes one grading in to the other. Um, so, so that's the basic trick to pass from that, that picture in the middle to the picture on the right. And that's how to define the graded local system around the boundary if you just are given the, um, the, the Stokes gradings on the sectors. Um, OK, so it's then possible to prove that these two perspectives are equivalent. Uh, OK. Right. So maybe I should define what is in the regular the class to try to help um, define what we've done. Uh, Sorry? When in the theorem with uniqueness, uh, is there a condition on SGLS, or is it any grading? So I'll have some axioms, and there'll be a unique one that obeys those axioms. Uh, okay, there's axioms for the SGLS. Right, so it's the axioms that it has to be graded around the boundary, it has to be in these Stokes groups. Um, okay, so let's go back to this picture. We have a... a a curve with a marked point A, and I can define this circle. So the basic fact is that there, there exists a canonically defined, uh, I can't spell, canonical um, uh, covering space. So this is curly I over this circle of directions. Um, this is the exponential local system. Um, or the local system of exponents of irregular connections. Um, so 
um, the local sections, so it's a huge infinite thing, um, the local sections are functions um, of the form. So it has an intrinsic perspective, and here is the perspective that depends on the coordinates. Um, the local sections are functions of the form Q um, is the sum, so ai x to the minus i over r, so summing for i from 1 to k for a particular k, and r is an integer which is allowed to vary for different q. Um, so each of these functions defined on a certain sector, so here, uh, maybe for later you want to call this z, so z is a coordinate that is equal to 0 at the marked point. Um, so a, such a function q would have a Galois orbit, so in particular it determines a circle, um, um, which is a finite cover. Um, so if I take r to be minimal, it will be a finite cover of degree r. Degree r. Um, so this thing i is a huge infinite union of all of these circles um, and there's a basic fact um, theorem um, which is due to Hucker, Hara, Turretin and Lavelt and this is the version of it that the phrasing of it due to Delinia um, is that the formal connections on a vector bundles over the punctured disk are equivalent to the topological objects of just I-graded local systems on this circle at the bottom. So formal connections, um, so connections on the formal punctured di disk, um, connections on the formal punctured disk, Um, this is equivalent to the category of I-graded I local systems. Local systems of vector spaces. Um, so this is a rephrasing of this classical re 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 result, um, but it helps to explain what's happening in the picture on the right, that any <coughs> connection has a natural form... Will, 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 formalization um, and in particular we automatically get this graded lo the, the, um, graded local system on the boundary and then the Stokes business is about how to glue that graded local system to the local system of solutions in the interior of the curve and so the true picture of what's happening is something like this where you go close enough to the boundary you know the boundary do do does break up into these graded pieces um, and Stokes explains us how to glue that back into the local system of solutions in the interior of the curve. We're breaking the structure group from some group G, for instance, GL2, to, for instance, a maximal torus or a block diagonal subgroup on the boundary. Um, this picture also ought to have the tangential pu punches, but it was hard to draw, and so um, they're not there. Um, but that is the basic picture of how you know, connections behave at the boundary. Um, Okay, so let me talk slightly more about this quasi-Hamiltonian perspective. It's basically a way to th th think about the, the explicit presentations of the spaces which occur. Um, so, uh, maybe I'll do that on this point at the top. Does that explain to the explanation of the system? Which theorem? So if you have a point on a curve, you get an exponential local system, and then that is what you use to grade the local systems in order to... System of sets of vector spaces. Yeah, I explain in the paper that a local system is a covering and then you have special cases of local systems of vector spaces where the clutching maps are linear. Um, 
Linux run better? Um, so let me talk briefly about the presentations. Um, Um, and how this leads into this quasi Hamiltonian approach. Uh, um, so basically, everyone knows what, what is the fundamental group of a punctured curve. Um, so I can just write down that you get presentations with relations, something like the product of the group commutators A, I, B, I, uh, and then the product of M, I, so from 1 to g and from 1 to n is equal to 1. Um, so if you look in Poincaré's paper, he does something slightly different where he chooses a base point near to each of the punctures like we did there. Um, and this is then written differently. So this part is then changed to be like c inverse i h i c i like this. Um, so we have a connection matrix from a fixed base point to the base point near the puncher. The, 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 the local um, um, the local monogamy, and then the, the path back. Uh, so this is basically the way it was presented by Poincaré. And it also fits into the extended moduli space perspective that was looked at by Lisa Jeffrey, um, at least in the case of compact groups. Um, so immediately, this starts to look like a group-valued symplectic reduction. Um, so the basic fact you need to prove, um, these are due to Alexei of Malkin and mein Rankin, is that it's possible to define a space. So the internally fused double is G cross G. Um, and this has a moment map given by the group com Mutator. Um, so mu is a map from D to G cross G uh, to, to G. And so AB um, maps to AB, A inverse, B inverse, which I denoted uh, the brackets AB above. Um, so they have this, and they prove that this is a quasi Hamiltonian G space. Um, so I don't want to list all of the axioms, but the basic idea dear, is that the group G um, acts on this space D, D by diagonal conjugation. Um, and it has the analog of a symplectic form such that it's possible to take the product of these such that the moment map for the product, the fusion product, is the product of the moment maps that you had before. And it's possible to do a multiplicative symplectic reduction. Mu inverse of 1 modulo g will be symplectic. Or if you just do the straight quotient modulo g, it will be Poisson. Um, and then there's the double, d, which is um, the double. Uh, so this is, again, g cross g. And this has the, the moment map mu ch is like in this part here. So uh, h inverse is the monogamy around the boundary. And then the other one will be C inverse HC. Um, so the space we get here is the fusion um, of G copies of the, um, the double like that. And then the uh, M copies of this. And then you want to look at the, mu the multiplicative symplectic quotient at the value one of the moment maps. So that's isomorphic to your character variety um, at the end of the day. Uh, so this still has an action of g to the m, um, so which fixes the h's. And if I quotient by that, that's also I will get the ones um, which we, we had at the start. Um, so the basic idea is that then Birkhoff extended this, um, Birkhoff 1913, um, so basically, you want to put the Stokes data in here. So you want to have a space. Um, so, so C inverse H C goes to C inverse H product of Stokes data multiplied by C. Um, and all of the discussion about these Stokes groups is a way to make precise exactly what is the product of Stokes data there. He looks at it's a particular generic case where each of the Stokes groups is of dimension 1. But now we are understand what happens in general. Um, so what you want to prove 
theorem. This was I know, on the archive in 2002. Um, I guess this is by me. Um, is that I can define a space A to be G cross H cross the product of the Stokes groups. Do D. Um, this is a quasi Hamiltonian G cross H space. Um, so it's a generalization of the space which is here, except we have this reduction of structure group, group to the block di diagonal group H in G. Um, and we have these Stokes groups as well. Uh, so this is a quasi Hamiltonian G, G cross H space with moment map. Uh, with moment map, so as for H inverse, and then the product that occurs here, C inverse H, the product of the Stokes data C. Uh, so this is in H cross G. So automatically we, we get um, algebraic symplectic and Poisson structures on the spaces which occur. Um, so this was only in the generic picture, and then there's an evolution, um, I guess from 2002, um, and it ended in this paper with Yamakawa, uh, in 2015, which does the most general twisting case. Um, uh, so this is the general case. Um, so we have this nice algebraic construction of the um, symplectic and Poisson structures on all of these spaces. Um, so at the end of the day, you have to fuse, you know, a copy of this for each of the marked points A. Um, OK, so I haven't really talked about the motivation that much. Perhaps I'll go back and try to do that now. Uh, so basically, I wanted to describe you know, sort of how one can think intrinsically about the, the various facts that were proved by other people. Um, so the basic project has been how to extend um, lots of statements about spaces of representation of the fundamental group to um, these wild character spaces. So I at least ought to try to, to list um, some statements that have been proved. Even if the basic aim of the talk was not to do that. But I think. Um, so this is like I know, the fundamental the theorems of character varieties. Um, so there's lots of things that are being proved in the case of compact curves. Uh, so for instance, um, I think the Poisson and symplectic structures were first looked at by a tier of bots. Um, Poisson and the symplectic structures. Um, so this goes back to a tier and bot. I don't know, in 1982, and there's a more algebraic perspective due to Goldman um, in 1984 or so. Um, and the symplectic structures which occur here were upgraded by Hitchin to hyperkähler metrics. So we have these hyperkähler metrics. And the correspondence between moduli space of connections and moduli spaces of Higgs bundles. Um, this is, I guess, Hitchin for the metrics, uh, 1987. Um, and to get the correspondence, it involves work of Collette, Donaldson, and Simpson as well. Uh, and then I got interested in this because I was interested in what happens if you um, vary the choice of the curve with the marked point. So we vary sigma and A. And in the irregular picture, it's natural to vary the irregular class also, which I didn't define. No one mentioned this. OK. Um, so the irregular class. Um, so if I have an I graded local system, it's only graded by a finite number of the circles. And for each of those, it p p picks out a particular you know, uh, subspace of each of the fibers. Um, so in regular, the class is just a choice of finite number of circles, um, so QI, um, plus a multiplicity for each. Um, so this is an integer great, greater than or equal to one. Um, so equivalently, it's a map theta um, from this co covering I. I have this huge number 
with circles um, from here to n, um, which is equal to zero on all but a finite number of components uh, and is constant on each of the circles. And so that's the, the basic data, basically picking out a finite number of exponential factors. Um, so in Stokes's picture here, he would have something like x to the 3 over 2 um, as his, his um, you know, and it's a cover of order 2. Um, OK, uh, so it's natural to va va vary this triple. Um, and this is what we call in the wake of the curve. And so this comes from the isomonogamy story. Um, and in particular, if you want to know intrinsically what are the times in the panel of A equations, those are coordinates on a moduli of irregular the curve. So for the panel of A6 picture, you're lo looking at the cross ratio of a four tuple of points, which is the case when the irregular the, the class is equal to zero. Um, but in the general picture for panel of A1 to 5, your time is a coordinate on perhaps the covering of the, the moduli space of ir irregular the curves which occur. Um, so lots of people still, you know, j j just restrict to looking at curves with marked points, but it's, it's equally natural to look at these um, moduli of triples, in particular if you want to understand the panel of A equations. Um, equations. Um, and the irregular isomonogamy story is basically the same as what people call wall crossing. Um, the walls occurred in Birkhoff's paper, and it was understood how to cross those um, in this work of Jimbo, Mir, and Ueno in 1980. Um, and then there was a story about you know, the counting of BPS states and the TT star equations, and Chicotti and Baffer and Dubrovin embedded that story in the isomonogamy story. So basically, I got to this picture by just wanting to understand how the braiding works in general, and not the particular cases having poles of order two, um, which occurred in the TT t star um, and the Frobenius story that Dubrovin had looked at. Um, OK, so we're able to extend each of these pi pictures. Um, so this, I guess, is due to Goldman too. Um, this is what Goldman calls the symplectic nature of the fundamental group, of the fu fundamental group. And so we, we want to, to understand in particular what is the symplectic nature of the wild fundamental group. Um, which basically comes d down to the fact that you get, when you vary this triple, you get a local system of Poisson varieties whose fibers are the wild character spaces, um, which is the exact analog of the statement that Goldman has here. And so each of these gets extended. So there should be a tame column also, but let me skip over that. Um, so this, the irregular Atia bot picture, was in um, a paper I wrote in. 2001, advances in math 2001. Um, so there's basically a straightening trick at each pole to get this Atiyah-Bot integral perspective to work. Um, this was upgraded to give complete hypercalar metrics in this paper with Bicard um, in, uh, I guess it was published in 2004. Um, so these are expected to be the same metrics which Gayote Moore and Knightsky have a look at. And so the conjecture seems to be that all of these series that Jan and Maxime look at should be the clutching maps for the twister spaces of these metrics. Um, but I don't think there's a single example in which that's known to be true, but that seems to be um, the most hopeful, you know, completely geometric interpretation of what these um, series mean. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, and then, yeah, so, um, right, there's various papers that look at this also. So, um, uh, yeah, so this starts out in this paper for the generic pi pi picture um, and then goes on to the general pi picture in um, some paper in published in 2014. Um, and then you need to look at the twisted picture also, but that works um, works the same. Uh, maybe I'll just end with a particular example. 
Uh, maybe I'll switch these over. Um, so of the two descriptions of the moduli spaces which occur, um, so if I look at the example of, of panel of A2, um, we can describe the space of Stokes filtrations and the space of wild monogamy representations, and you get you know, two equivalents but different looking algebraic descriptions of the, 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 the um, same space that first appeared in a paper of Flaschke and Newell in 1981. Um, so this is for panel of A2, um, and it's the same type of irregular class as occurs in this cortic oscillator, um, which may be better known um, to people here. Uh, so the Stokes filtered perspective, I would have six di directions, um, and the, the local system would be trivial. So I have a, a rank two connection with just one pole at the infinite point on the sphere. I do the real oriented glow up to get this disk. So I have a rank two local system of solutions. Um, and you have a, the subdominant solutions in each of the sectors. So you end up with a six tuple of points, P, P, P1 to P6. Um, so they're, they're filtrations of this vector space of dimension two. So you get six points of the sphere. Um, and the Stokes conditions across the, the poles says that PI is distinct from PI plus one. Um, so this modular space was looked at by Sibuya in his book in 1975, um, and I went over it in this archive paper in 1501, and so perhaps that's a better place to have a look than here. Um, so you get... Uh, so the symplectic spaces are got by fixing the formal monogamy around the boundary, and that corresponds to fixing the multi-ratio of these points. So we fix um, Q, which is the multi-ratio um, of these six points, uh, P1 to P6. And that corresponds to fixing the formal monogamy. Um, so the statement is that for generic Q, I think perhaps Q not equal to 1. Um, so this is a complete, um, complete hyperkähler manifold. Um, of you know, complex dimension two. Um, so it's the consequence. This is a, a special case of this re result with Bicard. Um, and then the other perspective, so we need to look at the singular di directions that here will interlace the six Stokes di directions. So that's something like this. Um, um, and then we have to have these tangential punctures and we get a graded local system by a trivial cover. So it's as if I, um, so it's, it's got two Q, something like X cubed, um, sort of I don't know, plus minus X cubed. Those are the exponential factors which occur. And so I have a grading there and I have these six Stokes matrices. Um, so you end up with something like H S1 S6 is equal to 1, where H is in a torus, and these are in sort of U plus cross U mi mi minus cubed. Um, so they have to um, um, they have to alternate between being upper and lower triangular. Um, and this ends up being isomorphic as an explicit description. Um, So we get this space B, the reduced fission space. Um, so it's just, um, so I can fix the H and the S1 and S2 as the function of the, the others. Um, and so I just end up with these four basically independent entries, which I'll call A, B, C, D, the off diagonal matrix entries which occur there. Um, and the fact you want H to be invertible means that the degree for Euler continuance is not equal to zero. And so that's mu is ABCD plus AB plus AD plus CD is not equal to zero. Um, so this is a quasi-Hamiltonian T-space. Um, and then the space we're interested in is the multiplicative symplectic reduction by this action of the torus. 
acting by conjugation. So it's as if you know A will be sc <laughs> scaled up and B, B is, is scaled down. And so this space MQ, Sibuya, is isomorphic to B simplex equation here by the torus. I can reduce to C star. Um, and you can compute explicitly what it is, and you get this surface written down by Flaschke and Newell. So um, this is Flaschke and Newell. They actually had a different lax pair for panel of A2, but it's known to be equivalent. It's x, y, z plus x plus y plus z is equal to a constant. Um, let me call that d. Um, no, let me call it b minus b inverse, and then I know that b is minus q squared to match up between this picture of the continuance to the picture of the multi ratio over here. So it has the, this um, complete, completely uh, explicit description. Um, so this then fits into a story of, of multiplicative quivers. Um, so this basically ends up being the invertible representations of the affine A1 quiver on C2. Um, so there's a large story of Nakajima quiver spaces. Um, and the Nakajima spaces occur as the additive moduli spaces of connections which occur here. Here we're looking at the Stokes picture, the multiplicative version. Um, but basically the maps A, B, C, D can be viewed as maps in both directions along each edge. Um, so it's natural to th think of this as the multiplicative version um, of the iguchi hansen space, which was the first known non-flat complete hypercalar me metric, um, which is in one complex structure, it's the cotangent bundle of P1, the, if you like, the affine A A1 quiver space. Um, so there's lo lots of other aspects of this I've not talked about. Maybe I should mention at the end that you know we, we now have the, the, these three different perspectives in which one can think about the Stokes data. In particular, it's possible to think about it as Stokes gradings. And when you look at the non-linear picture, um, you want to define what is a Stokes grading there. Well, you take the pro-torus um, whose character to lattice is the fibers of I, so you get this local system of pro tori, and you want to have an action of that. So you, you would expect to get you know tori at the boundary of your spaces. Um, and if you look look at the asymptotics of panel of A equations, I mean there's pa papers that have tori at the boundary, and so that should be the the Stokes gr gradings which occur. Um, so in particular, that there's a paper of Kitaev which has you know an explicit did, did description of the, the, the Stokes Tori for panel of A1. Um, maybe I should stop there. Um, thank you. I have not a question, but a remark, uh, because this uh, workshop is about resurgence, so we'll see. Where is the resurgence in the picture? If you look at the model on the, on the right, you have the Stokes uh, multiplier <laughs> SD, you take the logarithm of one of these multiplier, and then you re you re rebrate by the exponential torus, uh, the, the conjugate action of the exponential torus that is the rescaling of exponential, and then you perform the Fourier analysis, and the alien derivation are the coefficient of the Fourier analysis. Right, the alien derivations are the matrix entries of the Lie algebra, or the, the the logarithm of the Stokes matrix. I mean, I, I read this in your papers, but I guess it comes with Ecal or something. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's good to have a better connection to the subject of the conference, but that's. Yeah. Does your formalist help to classify the Panelier equations? Start a hundred years ago or um, I don't know. Uh, so it's not really clear precisely what is known. I mean, we sort of think there would not be any others, but, but um, has that actually been proved? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't like to say. So Pierre Amis would say that it's not a well-defined question, but it's maybe not the right question.
Well, you know, are there any other complete hypercalar spaces of dimension two of complex dimension two? It would be a, you know, we had this business. I had a student and I. We looked at, you know, there's certain character varieties for G two which have a moduli space of complex dimension two, and we worked hard and proved that you get the Frick Klein Vought surfaces for, you know, if it's isomorphic to the case of Panavay's dicks, and so, you know, there's an interesting lax pair for the symmetric Panavay six equations, which has you know, structure group G2. Um, but there's lo lots of others, and one would like each of those. I mean, maybe it's known how to do it for GLN, but even I'm not completely clear there's a, a complete pr proof of that. But once you start to look at other groups also, there's lots of groups that out there, and I've, I've looked at certain examples, but you, know, you would like to have a proof, you know, sort of what the panel of A equation is there, and that it's equivalent to the one which is here. I think you know, one would like to have a cleverer perspective. I, I, yeah, uh, there's, there's lots of problems. Let's have um. speaker again. Yeah.